The Kingdom Hearts franchise has a reputation for changing the way its spells work between entries, and this means that not only have different games used different magic systems, but the specific mechanics relating to recurring spells have also changed. In the original Kingdom Hearts, for example, fire functioned like a pistol, while in Kingdom Hearts 2 it was more of a short-range fire wall. This sort of variation came about as the development teams explored ways to improve upon the mechanics of earlier games and to complement the unique needs of each individual entry. This led to each Kingdom Hearts game having its own set of especially useful spells, and that's why we wanted to go over 7 of the most useful spells in Kingdom Hearts history. As usual though, we're going to be covering one spell per game, and to kick things off, we're going to start with Eroga from the original Kingdom Hearts. When Kingdom Hearts released in 2002, it was designed to appeal to a few different audiences. The objective was to therefore try and make a game that, on multiple levels, could draw in fans of Final Fantasy, fans of Disney, and fans of role-playing. In the end, they decided to create an action role-playing game that was on the surface quite simple, but also had the potential to be brutally hard. To that end, Many players have sunk dozens of hours into exploring the optional late and post-game content, with expert mode upping the ante. Specific fights, such as those found in the Hades Cup and super bosses like the Phantom, could pose a real problem here. But aside from power leveling and upgrading equipment, there was one thing that players were able to do in order to instantly decrease the difficulty of these fights, unlock Eroga. Sora learned the base version of Aero as he naturally progressed through the story by defeating Opposite Armor. But unlocking the upgraded versions of Aero was important, with one being found via a Yellow Trinity in Neverland and the other being awarded to Sora after saving all 99 puppies. Whichever of these two activities you did first granted Aurora, and whichever you did second granted Aroga. Once Sora had Aroga, most fights in the game became significantly easier. The spell surrounded Sora in protective winds that reduced damage taken, while also dealing constant damage to any enemy that came into contact with the winds. It also deflected most enemy attacks and projectiles, which trivialized the mechanics of many enemies and bosses. For example, Yuffie's basic shurikens couldn't harm Sora when Aroga was up. What's more is that a single cast of Aroga could last a long time, especially if Sora had a high MP Keyblade equipped. This was because the duration of the spell was equal to 18 seconds plus Sora's maximum MP. Given Eroga cost only 2 MP to cast, an MP heavy Sora could keep it applied for the entirety of most fights, including super bosses. However, as useful as Eroga was against super bosses in Kingdom Hearts, Reflectgar was an even more useful spell when squaring off against super bosses in Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2 was designed to be a much faster paced game than the original. This narratively made sense given it followed an older and more experienced Sora who was more comfortable with a Keyblade, but it also gave an edge in combat to spells that could be cast quickly to give Sora more breathing room, and one such spell was Reflectgar. At its core, Reflect functioned in a similar manner to Eroga in the original Kingdom Hearts in that it provided both offensive and defensive utility except it was even more powerful as it completely negated all enemy damage and dealt a massive amount of area effect damage to all nearby enemies. The only downside was that in exchange, Reflectgar only lasted for a few moments, unlike Erogar which could last for a very long time. When timed appropriately though, Reflectgar allowed Sora to use enemies and super bosses attacks against them by fully blocking and reflecting the damage back at them. Although the natural drawback of this spell was that it required specific timing, there was still a pretty wide timing window. Reflectgar also blocked attacks from all directions, so you didn't even have to know where an attack was coming from. Even in instances where players wanted to defend against hard to time attacks, they were able to simply spam Reflectgar provided their MP pool allowed them to do so. To circumvent this, players could actually structure Sora's build around MP regeneration by equipping multiple Full Bloom Plus accessories to stack the MP haste ability. And this strategy then made multiple notoriously difficult data fight super bosses in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix much easier to overcome. 
Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep was unique in that it allowed players to experience three standalone stories that cumulatively functioned as one larger story mode. Each story followed one of the members of the Wayfinder trio from the day of the Mark of Mastery exam to the events of the Keyblade Graveyard. Each of these characters had very different play styles, and although some of the spells they had access to overlapped with one another, some spells were locked to certain characters. One such spell was the ultimate class magic command called Seeker Minds, which belonged exclusively to Aqua, the most magically inclined of the trio. Acting as a more powerful offshoot of the Mind family of spells that both Terra and Ventus had access to, Seeker Minds saw Aqua able to place a line of mines down by her side and then send them out towards nearby enemies like homing missiles. The mines then exploded when an enemy was within close enough range to them. This spell was particularly powerful because it allowed players to win almost any fight by playing defensively. As long as the player was able to regularly play Seeker Mines and the enemies or bosses approached them, the player would naturally win. This meant there was often no specific need to master an enemy's mechanics, Aqua just had to keep dodging. Due to the command deck system in Birth by Sleep, players also never needed to worry about running out of MP to cast spells since commands always recharged. With enough time, players would eventually wind up victorious if they were patient and could dodge long enough. This led players to beat notoriously difficult super bosses like Vanitas Remnant with command decks full only of Kuragas and Seeker Mines. Although this was something players could have done with other commands in the Mind family, Seeker Mines were much more effective because they had a large range due to their homing properties. This meant players didn't have to take as many risks to bait enemies into getting very close to the mines they cast. Chain of Memories was considered to be an original bridge game between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, and although this mantle was taken up later by 358 over two days upon release, Chain of Memories was still the game that provided players a formal introduction to Organization 13. It also introduced a card-based combat system that differed from the more action-heavy combat in both Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. This meant all actions, like performing basic attacks or casting a specific spell, required a card to perform. Sora was able to play these cards by themselves to perform basic functions, or combine these cards in a specific sequence to perform a more powerful ability. The stop spell was involved in a total of 9 different sequences, with some of them being amongst the most powerful in the game. One of the sequences was required to cast the devastating warp spell for example, which instantly eliminated all enemies. But most notably, stop could also be used to perform lethal frame. This ability was easy to incorporate into a deck and cast because it only required the player to use stop and two basic keyblade cards. When cast, it stopped time, protecting Sora for the duration of the ability and dealing a large number of hits to a target. Each hit had a significant multiplier of 3.5 times damage, with the final hit having an even greater multiplier of 5 times damage. What's more, enemies were unable to resist the stop duration of Lethal Frame, meaning it was useful in the majority of fights. Because of how easy it was to build into a deck, how much damage it could deal, and how constantly it could stop time, players were able to build decks entirely around the strategy of using stop to perform Lethal Frame. Players who then used this strategy were almost always guaranteed victory, because they essentially became invincible. And this meant they were even able to tear through traditionally difficult fights like those against Riku Replica. Kingdom Hearts 3 had a lot to live up to given the hype that surrounded its historically long development cycle. To help deliver on fan expectations, alongside including a plethora of high profile Disney and Pixar properties, Sora was given access to new abilities, something which saw him become more competent as a fighter and a mage as the game progressed. And one of the ways that Kingdom Hearts 3 showcased this best was through the inclusion of Grand Magic. Sora could use Grand Magic as a reaction command whenever he cast enough of a corresponding spell in a short period of time. When used, Sora was then able to cast a spell that was one level higher than the spell he'd used to trigger it. For example, if Sora used Thunder frequently, his Grand Magic reaction command would then allow him to use Thunder R. So when Sora readied Grand Magic through the use of the third tier Gar spell, it would give him access to the fourth tier Zar spell for the first time in the franchise. And the difference in power between the third and fourth tier magics was significant, as well as was the accompanying visual spectacle. 
When Thundersaw was used, it effectively became a screen wipe. Due to its nature as an area of effect spell, it caused massive damage, with a reaction value which determined its attack power as 7.2, and this was multiple times greater than the reaction value of Thundergar at 2.4. It meant Thundersaw could instantly clear out most enemies in the game, even ones in some of the post-game battle gates if Sora was able to cast it at a high enough level. Given its original designation as a mobile game, Kingdom Hearts Coded introduced some interesting gameplay mechanics, and those mechanics were then amplified when it was re-released as Recoded. It saw commands structured like resources, given players could only have so many in their loadout. This meant more powerful commands took up more memory, which meant players had to compromise by equipping less or lower level commands in their other slots. The command Triple Pursuit took up 22% of the memory allocation, but it was very versatile and effective. It was a spell that could be cast on the ground or in the air, and quickly shot three icicles at a target in succession, each of which dealt significant damage. The spell could also functionally interrupt an enemy, allowing Sora to use it quickly in a defensive fashion if needed, which was especially helpful when playing on critical mode due to the extra damage enemies dealt. The spell also notably had a 25% chance of freezing its target per hit, which meant the overall odds of it temporarily taking an enemy out of the fight were actually quite decent, and this was super helpful during challenging encounters on critical mode. That then brings us on to the last entry, which is from Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. Due to the nature of this game, the setting led to the characters having access to more fantastic abilities than they otherwise would have had in a more traditional adventure in the Realm of Light. One of these abilities allowed them to cast a spell that summoned magical balloons that popped on touch to deal massive amounts of damage. This spell was called Balloon and had three tiers, Balloon, Balloon Ra, and Balloon Gar. However, contrary to what players expected, the second tier spell, Balloon Ra, was more powerful than the third. This was because Balloon Ra had an absurdly short cooldown time between casts, allowing for players to fill their command deck entirely with Balloon Ra commands, which could then be cast indefinitely with almost no break. This was uniquely game-breaking, because each cast of Balloon Ra summoned multiple balloons around the caster that staggered enemies as they dealt damage, meaning that the caster effectively became immune to damage if they kept recasting the spell. Its stagger effect was even able to undermine the game's premium superboss, Julius. By the time Julius recovered, the player could just cast Balloon Ra again. This spell was considered by fans to be extremely broken because it required almost no skill or thought to execute perfectly against the game's most challenging enemies. This even led to fans uploading videos beating hard bosses with little to no movement by just casting Balloon Ra until they won. So there you have it. They were seven of the most useful spells in the history of the Kingdom Hearts franchise. But with the franchise being so large and expansive, and with so many properties to call upon, there are bound to be plenty more that we missed. So which spells have you exploited over the years? Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Kingdom Hearts content in the future. With that though, this is Daryl, signing out. I'll see you all again soon for more Kingdom Hearts goodness.